Hello, everyone, and welcome to another installment of our virtual face-to-face -face series. Today, we're going to be talking about all things body language, and uh, it is an honor to have uh, the master of body language, uh, body language coach and mentor, Renee de Koenig, here with us. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to preface this uh, at the very beginning before we get too far into the conversation, and I forget to mention this. If anybody during the course of this uh, of this interview, of this conversation, has uh, any questions, please feel free to write them, uh, send them over to us. We will do our best, sort of in the last 15 minutes, we try to answer any questions that you might have. We might not get to everybody, but um, feel free to send them to us and we will make sure that even if after the interview your question has not been answered, uh, we will, they'll be sent over in an email and you will have, uh, you will, they will be answered essentially. <laughs> so back to us. Thank you so much for being uh, here with us this evening. It's an absolute honor. And I have to say that um, it's, uh, it's a very fascinating, it's a fascinating topic because body language is something that we all consciously or subconsciously uh, speak talk you know with the language it's, it's a language that we all imbibe we all have but maybe a lot of us aren't essentially conscious of what we're doing with our body or how we're reading other people and the, the cues that they might give um so let's let's start from the beginning um how talk to us a little bit about your about your background about how everything started all right thank you nicole for the introduction uh, and thank you for having me and also Oxford Business College, thank you for having me again. This is not my first time with Oxford Business College. We know each other, we go a long way. Uh, but it's yeah. good to be back with you guys. It's amazing. It's been a while though. But uh, what's my background? My background is that I was born in uh, Knokke in Belgium at the Belgian coast with the Hollandish border in that upper corner there. Um, had an ICU, was bullied like crazy in school, but hey, uh, and then went to the army in the armed forces. So I went to the navy. From the navy, I went to uh, the land troops, and then uh, started jumping out of airplanes and ended up flying airplanes. <laughs> I mean, thing is, that was an amazing journey. Uh, and then uh, from there, I took it back to Belgium. I was in the armed forces in Germany, and in Belgium, I, I searched for some jobs. I had some money coming in, but that was not really. I mean, I was like, there's more in life than that. And what happened is that in 1995, I bought my very first book and it was Notes from a Friend from Tony Robbins. And I said, wow, that's an amazing book. It's a tiny book, you know, you can read it in less than two hours. I went through the book and I was like, whoa, I want to meet the guy. And I went home and said, I told everybody, I'm going to meet Tony Robbins. And I said, who are you that he will make time for you? And I said, I don't know, but I got that feeling. And then I started my own company in October, uh, the 5th of October, 1995, 26 years ago, I started my own company. And it didn't take off right away. On the contrary, it, it went down right away. I mean, you know, I thought this was it. You know, I had the golden egg. I was I was going to do something and I was going to go make a lot of money. And but that was not really the, the reality. The reality was I had a supermarket with all kinds of products from the personal development uh, industry and from health and wealth and, and NLP and I name it. I probably had it in my in my supermarket. The only thing I didn't have was customers. And I was like, how is this possible? And somebody said to me, uh, Renee, you have to have a niche. And I said, yeah, I have to have a niche. And I went home and said, what's a niche? I mean, <laughs> I learned it the hard way. I really learned it from scratch. Um, yeah, and learning in me that we're not best friends. So anyway, what, <laughs> what happened is that I started investigating the whole thing. And one day there was a couple of my friends that said, hey, Renee, come with us. We're going to a, a, a presentation about body language. And I said, Body language, come on and get serious. Body language, that's for hippies, that's not for me. I mean, you can go, I'm not going. And they said, come on, man, go with us, come with us. I said, you know what, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm coming with you, right? I'm going to do you a favor. That was the biggest favor for myself because today it's my it's my brother and butter, right? I'm, I'm running this show like for the last so many years. And, and, um, and I'm happy I did that. And then from there, it didn't take off again, not right away but bit by bit, bit by bit. And in those 26 years, to be frankly honest with you, Nicole, only the last eight years were really amazing. All the years before, you might say the, 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 the 18 years before were like preparation. You go to the lows and the highs and the lows and the highs and the lows and the highs. Why isn't it working? It's working. Why it's not working? It's working. 
So I went like that, but all of a sudden that was like a click. And that was the day also that I went completely independent, right? And that was that leap of faith, like, hey, people say, you're going to start your own business? Said, yeah, you'll have your own book. But now I'm going fully 100% into body language. And that was an amazing step, an amazing leap of faith. And But today I'm so happy I did that. I took that leap of faith. Lost a lot of money, won a lot of money. I mean, that's a combination of. But that's a bit of my background. And today uh, I can honestly, honestly say that uh, I've been working with Tony Robbins. I've been collaborating with Success Resources and doing previews for Tony Robbins. I've been traveling the world uh, with my body language. I've been teaching in Thailand and in Iran and the Middle East and in Australia. I, I got stuck for five months in Australia last year. I mean, I wouldn't go it stuck. I, I, I would been, I, I've been taken care of very, very well. I can't complain at all. But it was an amazing experience. <laughs> we did some road trips and had some fun as well. You know? But what happened is that uh, today I'm so glad that I can travel now the world doing these presentations about body language. And it's not about me and it's not about body language. It's about people. And when people get that information and they use it in a proper way, like Tony would say, Knowledge is amazing. However, applied knowledge is, is priceless. And that's the whole thing. And the last time I was in the Middle East, I was teaching 25 entrepreneurs in, in, in the oil industry, like do this, do that. And if you do this, you will have that as a result. And really we'll have three full days. Amazing. However, I've got people now calling me or texting me or through Instagram. Hey, Renee, thank you so much. I applied this and this and this. And this is my result. That is amazing what you just taught us. I said, that's yeah, but that's the whole purpose, right? whole purpose is to dig into that uh, that engine here upside, uh, up, uh, upstairs, right? Dig into that called neuroscience. And, and the neuroscience is an amazing science. Um, but I'll explain that later. I mean, just an introduction about myself, wasn't it? It was a... <laughs> no, I mean, this is, it's opening a whole lot of doors. When I, when I, get, when I, when I get excited, I get excited, right? It's, <laughs> It's, uh, well, it's, 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 it's it shows that you're yeah. passionate about what you do, and it's clear. It's it's. Yeah. it's I think it's a. I think it's everyone's dream to be able to, to really be passionate about what they're doing mm -hmm. and and feel like they, they're well, they're successful at it too. So this is you know just the, re the reason. So really the reason I'm so excited and so passionate, uh, Nicole, is because I've got results, and it's yeah. not about me. I'm just a delivery boy, ish, right? It's not about me. It's about sharing that knowledge with people and then when people use it and apply it and then you see these results it's getting me excited and passionate about what i do i mean because yeah. in the end when you leave this planet you don't take anything with you and people will remember you for what you did not for what you said right so back yeah. to you. <laughs> no, that, that, that's incredibly true i mean we, we oftentimes strive to to for things that a lot that only last for the span of our lifetime, so to speak, but actually is what we leave behind. And in fact, if you can have an impact on others, it's, I mean, that I think is the ultimate goal. And with something like this, I feel like it's something that all kind of, as I said, because we know, know that there is a body language, do react, act with, you know, with, with on, you know, there's, there's actual language and there's body language. But I think a lot of people don't, as you said, when you sort of begrudgingly followed your friends to doing them a favor going to that event, um, you, uh, you're like, you know, what is this body language? Oh, it's for hippies kind of a thing. And, and, and actually, I wonder if there still is, um, maybe it's, it's changed over the course of the years, but do you think that body language is something that people still sort of underestimate or like, they underestimate the importance of it. What would you say is the importance of body language? So there's a couple of things in there. And what your statement is so true, it, it's underestimated like crazy. So the first thing to know is that we have about in between, I don't, I don't think, I don't know the exact number, but in between nine, uh, 193, 195 um, countries in the world, recognized countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have about 6,800 languages on the planet. And there's more than 40,000 alternative languages or dialects on the planet. Sure. There's only one body language. That is true. <laughs> Though, they have to know that there's cultural differences. Thumbs up in Bangladesh is something different than thumbs up in Europe. Even in Iran, it's different. It's very offensive. Thumbs yeah, up. I was about to say, I'm, I'm pretty sure that one of them is not okay. <laughs> 
So you have to really dig into the cultural differences, but for the rest, body language is a global, a global thing, a global language. Yeah. And why is it global? It's based on how you feel. How you feel will generate a certain body language. If I would ask you, how is your posture when you feel down and depressed and sad and anxiety and go like, right? Yeah. What happens with your body when you get excited? Your eyes, head up, wow, you're, you're energized. Both cases will generate a certain body language. And then it's that body language that we send out. Now you do have to understand, you do have to understand that when you, when you speak, when you touch, when you hear, when you listen, when you, when you taste something, these are things in the conscious, in, in the moment. So when I speak to you, this is conscious. You're aware of it. It's in the moment. Mm -hmm. now, body language, together with intonation, which, which we call nonverbal uh, communication, goes subconsciously. Because if I would ask a thousand people, how many of you know about body language and how would that work? I guarantee you 80% can't answer that question. And that's okay. That's human. But when you know that so, uh, the nonverbal communication goes through the subconscious mind, now conscious, we transfer 40 bits of data per second. 40 bits of data per second. Subconsciously, we transfer 40 million bits of data per second, which is included the nonverbal communication. 38% is the intonation, 55% is the body language. And then people say, what? I said, yeah, only 7% is conscious, other words. Now, it's very important, though, if it's only 7% to know what you say. Would that make sense? <laughs> yeah. If I would say, how many of you would like to uh, buy a ticket? Yeah. Or I would say, how many of you would know, um, how many of you would know that today, right now, is the time to buy a ticket? When is the right time to take a decision right now? And everybody say, okay, right now. It, it, the words you use and how you build up your sentences is so important. Are you taking a decision today? Or when is the right time to take a decision right now? Yeah. Different, different, different words, same question. So these 7% are so important. However, 93% is intonation and body language. And that's why it's so important to know that, that what we transfer in terms of communication, words is very small, subconsciously, the body language. If you, I don't know if you're watching my hands right now, but what I'm doing is like, I'm using them, right? That's and also very important when you, if you speak in front of the camera, that people can see your hands. Because that will accentuate what you say. So is it underestimated, which is your question? It is so underestimated. Yeah. Because what you put out there, let me just finish this, conscious will go to the conscious of the other person. Subconscious will go to the subconscious of that other person. That will be processed and come back to you. That's why it's been said that the outside world is in fact a reflection of yourself. yourself. Because what you put out there comes back. Makes sense. And as the late Irene Dyer would say, what you put out there in the universe will come back to you as well. What you think about on a daily basis is what you get. It's not just a fun quote. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, as you were saying, you know, there's different ways of putting it. Some people will just sort of say like the energy you give out is the energy that comes back. All these things are the same way of, of expressing this thing. Now, this concept, but, uh, so, you know, my, this question kind of comes to mind immediately, which is how do you tap into the subconscious <laughs> if you realize that, you know, only a very fractional percentage of, of, of what you have conscious control over which are the words or, you know, the active uh, part of your communication, it's, it's so small that you think, okay, well, now I have to tap into my subconscious. How do I do that? It's very easy. It's, um, you do have to know that your subconscious mind is that machine or that part of the brain that works 24-7. Now, what I mean about 24-7, day and night. Let me, get, let me ask you a question. If you go to bed tonight and you close your eyes, do you think, or do you have questions about, hey, I'm going to sleep, will I keep on breathing while I'm sleeping? No, you just go to sleep. You trust the system that you will keep on breathing while sleeping. Right. Then you go to sleep, you wake up and you say, hey, will, I, will my heart keep on beating while I'm sleeping? Because I'm, after all, I'm going to sleep, I have no guarantees. 
it will keep on bleeding 24-7 yeah. because the subconscious mind works 24-7. That's how it works. Now, the subconscious mind is that part of the brain that will gather, gather all the information your whole life through. From the day you open up your eyes, Right, all of that information, what happened in your youth, what happened in, in when you were a teenager, when, what happened when you were a young adult, what happened when you were in your 30s and your 40s, every layer of that subconscious mind will have all that information. Whatever happened in your life will go through that subconscious, will be installed on that subconscious mind. How can you tap into your subconscious mind? Well, there are certain things that you can do. However, for example, going to a hypno, hypnotherapist, mm -hmm. they will help you and show you how to do that. A hypnotherapist, because if I would explain you right now how it works, that's a different seminar. Right. <laughs> but for example, a hypnotherapist would easily say to you, hey, let's do this, let's do that, right? You go in, you, you, you step in that little aircraft, you fly back into uh, the past. What, the, what happened in your, in your, when you were a kid? In the first installation of software on your, on your hardware, I call it, from the day where you're born until um, your, uh, um, how you call that? Puberty. Right from zero to puberty, when you accept every single thing, you're open for everything. You got a thousand questions to you for your parents, your friends, hey, yeah, and everybody gives you information, 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 and you absorb all that information. Once you turn into your puberty, you don't believe anything anymore because what they tell you, they say, nah, 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 nah. What do you know about it? Right? And what happened is that that's a, an amazing period as well because. You're learning the hard way, when the, the higher rate of puberty, the harder you learn how life is really working, right? But that's good. That's how you learn. We learn in, in, in times when things are not going very well or good, we learn the most. Would you agree? And then after that period, when you turn 20 or 24, real life starts. And these are the three periods of your life that you can say, hey, how can I tap into my subconscious? A lot of things. For example, uh, somebody that stuttered uh, for, for, for 35 years, they healed, they healed them in seven minutes. And the only thing they did, they went back into time. And what they found out is that the guy, his parents were alcoholic and they were always fighting. And the guy was two years old and he came all the time. He came in between his parents and it worked. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't. And all of a sudden he, see, he saw a character on television stuttering and he took over the stuttering to separate his parents whenever there was a fight. The sad thing about the whole thing is that he kept on stuttering the rest of his life, right? And at the age of 37, he went to, into counseling and they, they healed him from stuttering in seven minutes just by going back into time and using certain systems. So how can you tap into your subconscious? The best thing to do is to, first of all, go and, 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 and see somebody who is really a professional in hypnotherapy right mm -hmm. or do some research on on, on, on the internet I mean. yeah. yeah i mean it's yeah it's 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 one of those things that you know i, I think that uh, there are a lot of things that some people do like i don't know why i do this all the like i do this all the time or something that habitually keeps coming up even in your in your interactions with people that sometimes is what blocks you from maybe making that taking that step and and maybe being able to unlock certain things and like professionally or personally uh, so yeah, I mean, going going to uh, seeking professional um, advice and help for that is always is it can be incredibly powerful. Um, what is it that you find usually uh, in in your courses when it comes to you know obviously we're we're looking at body language in a business context or or in life. I mean, usually when we talk about getting ahead in business and things like that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, your courses tend to uh, focus a lot on people who want to maybe unblock certain things in their in their professional uh, environment. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, what is it that you usually find that people are, will say is their number one sort of reason for wanting to understand their body language more to get, to be able to get it ahead, so to speak? There's different areas, you know, I'm, I've got like three different areas I can already mention or maybe four. Right. One is business. They want to mm -hmm. have better results in business. They want to go to that next level in business. And we got parents with their kids. Right. right. They said, hey, my kids this, my kids that, and school, and the teachers are saying this. And then 
they'll start reading body language and they'll find out so many beautiful things about their kids right mm -hmm. the third area is relationships right this afternoon i was listening to a podcast and the question was would you date you I mean, that's, this is something to think about. I mean, if you would ask the question to a lot of people, hey, would you date you? Holy moly, I don't know, right? Yeah, know Another question might be, would you follow you? Mm. These are things. Now, the fourth um, uh, area, what I, what I have a lot of people asking me for advice and, and, and also uh, hire me is uh, the politi uh, politics, uh, judges and lawyers and investors i mean this is a complete different area but investors lawyers um and politics and then judges because for them body language is super important in, in a, can you imagine in a courtroom and you can read body language right mm -hmm. and some of them already went through a course in body language but these are all basic courses you do have to realize that body language in fact and i have to be honest about this body language is a part of nlp and for those who don't know what NLP is, NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. NLP, Neuro Brain Linguistic, your language, and how do you program your language, right? Now, body language is a very small part of NLP. What I did, I extracted that part of body language. And then people look at it, what, really? I said, yeah. Now. You lost me first. Sorry, we lost you just for a second. We had a, a moment of, at least I, I, I the, the screen froze for a moment. Okay. <laughs> no, okay, well, to go back to the NLP thing. So, neuro linguistic yeah. programming, neuro brain linguistic language, and programming. How do you program your language? Uh, and mm -hmm. in terms of words, right? Body language is a very small part of NLP. I did extract that part of body language, and people say, "Wow, what you're telling me is this true?" I said, "This is science. This is not me. This is pure science." And it's the same as a form I compare it with a Formula One pilot. Formula One pilots and pilots in general, jet fighter pilots, whatever, and I've been flying in the army, what you do in the first place, you don't get in an airplane or you don't get in a Formula One car. You study the engine, you study aerodynamics, you study the whole thing about that uh, vehicle, if, if it's an, a, jet, a fighter jet or, or a, a Formula One, you have to study the engine, aerodynamics, all the things that has to do with that particular vehicle. And when you succeed in your tests, they then let you step into a Formula One or a fire or, or, or an airplane, right? It's the same with body language. Study first here what's going on up here. Once you start understand what's, what's happening over there, once you understand what body language in fact is and what it is based on, you can then read the signs. Because the signs is the last part. The signs are just a result of what's happening in here. So it's very important to study that first and then the rest. What I do in my courses is that I explain everything in human language. And that's the beauty of it. That brings out, yeah, finally one person that doesn't speak any university language <laughs> or academic language, yeah. but all my respect for universities and the Canadians though, but yeah, that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah. It's communicated in, in, in real life, real talk. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's uh, I, I, something that came up to mind to mind as well was uh, the idea of you know how you said you know obviously that the common things that, you know examples are if you're not feeling confident or whatever you sort of or dip down or you you physically your body physically closes off and then if you're feeling happy you open up again now uh, kind of along that same line but it makes me think of uh, how much does confidence play a role in the way in our body language and our ability also to recognize other people's body language because i feel like sometimes uh the, the two things obviously go hand in hand you know how much especially in your courses some people also don't go for that reason of also having getting a bit more confidence and feeling like they're also in control of, of what they put out and also more confident that they are able to understand what they receive yeah well confident um if you're not confident people will see it anyway mm -hmm. even if they don't know nothing about body language their subconscious mind will absorb it ever had that feeling you're in a situation and you got that gut feeling that says yeah something's wrong here we all have that 
and you don't know nothing about body language. You're meeting a person and your gut feeling says, nah. Or that gut feeling says, hmm, interesting, right? I can't explain it, but it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So that gut feeling in the first place is so important to, to recognize body language, to understand that that is there. So when somebody is not confident, the other person will unconsciously, their subconscious will absorb these signs because everything in life is energy. What you put out there is energy. What comes back to you is energy, right? And if you are producing a a posture or just being not comfortable, uh, comfortable or uh, not have enough confidence, the other person will see it anyway. Now, if that person knows about body language, they will see it like this in the blink of an eye, right? What I teach people though in these courses mm -hmm. is that are you still there? Because the screen. Yes, I am. Sometimes, it, sometimes it it it, it yeah. walks a little bit, but no, we we're all still there. Well, it's a long way from Italy to Amsterdam to to London, isn't it? It's we're <laughs> connecting from all over the world. This is our new reality. Yeah. And maybe for the people, I don't know. Maybe write in the comments where you where you're logging in from. I mean, that would be amazing as well to know where you where you uh, yeah, looking well, from. That would be yeah. interesting to hear um, where everyone, where everyone's coming from, where everyone's uh, connecting, connecting from. Because I mean, as you said, you know, all around the world, and you've also had like experience in this, in in going yeah. basically all over the world. Um, actually, on that note, traveling as much as you do and giving uh, and and teaching people about body language all over the world, have you found that there are some things that are not? I won't say not universally true, but what you what you teach what you communicate has that changed and adapted over the years to sort of as you've sort of encountered and traveled more and seen how maybe certain things are different in different countries or in different cultures have you sort of adapted your technique uh to the different places you go to or have you found that there are some universally common uh yeah parts of body language that, you know, cause you said, you know, thumbs up can mean one thing in one place and one thing. That's a very active gesture. Um, mm -hmm. But some, you know, sometimes I think would, would maybe certain reactions or certain things that subconsciously our, our bodies do, are they completely um, international? As in- I know, I know what you mean. 80, culturally, 80, you know, yeah. There's a, law, there's a law of Pareto that says 80, 20. The law of Pareto, and Pareto was an Italian, uh, you got 80-20. 80% okay. of all the money is with 20% of, uh, of the people on the planet, and 20% of the money is with 80% of the people on the planet. That's the 80-20 rule. Everything is 80-20 in life, right? But to get back first to the first thing about confidence, I will get back to your question anyway, but we, because I didn't finish it. What I do okay. is that <laughs> when people are not confident in, in certain situations, or maybe 100% not confident in life, anyway and they come to see for information uh, and they, they call me or they come and see me is what I do I first of all let them discover who they are mm -hmm. who are you because um, until you don't discover who you are how can you change right so they discover who they are in the first place what postures and gestures are you using right at this very moment and then I teach them how to level with people how can you level with somebody, okay. right? If you turn to the right, I'll turn to the right. You'll turn to the left, I'll turn to the left. You cross your arms, I'll cross my, it's called mirroring mm -hmm. magic, right? Mm -hmm. If I mirror you enough, and then before you change, I change, you might take over my position, which is a connection of a higher level. Whatever I will ask you to do afterwards, there's an 80% chance you will do it. Sure. And these are techniques that I learned to people who are not confident in life, not confident in business, not confident, with their kids or in their job or it doesn't matter where but if you want to gain confidence first find out who you are and then find out who somebody else is by asking enough questions right mm -hmm. and when you have enough questions and enough answers then you can watch where people their eyes are going when they're asking your questions etc 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 you can also turn your body to the right look where your left eye and the left eye turn to the left right eye right eye that has a meaning right eye connected with the left brain which is a rational brain how do you connect left brain with the left brain? Why would you do that? You want an outcome from a higher level. That's what it's all about. Now, to get back to the last question is that, did I adapt or change my way of teaching or content? 
20% yes, again, 80% no. It's always it's always 80-20 with me. 80% no, because body language has been there since human beings are there. Since animals are there, mm. right? Body language, sometimes, somebody, somebody said to me the other day, body language, that's new. I said, no, it's been the first language on the planet. <laughs> when you think about it. Yeah. There, was no, there was no Dutch or German or French or Japanese or whatever, but there was body language, right? So do I change a lot? No. Mm -hmm. I do change certain things in terms of the, what is the crowd that is sitting in front of me. I was in London during a business meeting. We had three, 4,000 people in the room, all business people. It can be very rational. It can be very con uh, conservative. It can be very, all depends on, you have to have ask, you have to ask questions in the room based on what you get back from the, from the room. You can find out are they rational, are they conservative, are they open, are they excited? I mean, in Thailand, they said to me in Bangkok, they said, hey, Renee, these people are very quiet. You will not be able to get them out of their chair and dancing. And, you know, be aware of that. I said, thank you for the information. Within 10 minutes, they said they were dancing. I mean, all depends on, <laughs> as a speaker, it's not about us. We are just the delivery boy of the message or the delivery girl, right? We are just delivering a message. Sometimes backstage, I go into meditation. I ask the universe to give me the right tools, the right information, the right power, the right energy, so I can share all of that with the audience. It's not about me, it's about them. And sometimes I say things on a stage I never said before, but then ask and you shall receive, right? And I say, you know what? Let's have some fun. And people say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But within 10 minutes, they're all dancing and having fun. So do I change certain things? Yeah, a little bit, but not all the time. Right. So, I mean, it's, I kind of feel like much like the uh, sort of your, your uh, journey to getting where you want to, to becoming a uh, master of body language is that even as, as you were younger, you know, someone would tell you don't do this or you can't do this. And you went and did it. I feel like it kind of, it also really works in this context because you uh, forcing people in a way, forcing is not maybe the, the, the most, like uh, the best word for this, but you are pushing people out of their comfort zone, so to speak, in a way without making them feel sort of uncomfortable. So, you know, you said very, very quiet room, but it may be because they've been conditioned to be that way. And so now it's about tapping into something else that that opens them up and it makes them more receptive to to their mm. surrounding it's sipping out of the box and as a fellow speaker in india used to say don't break out don't don't step outside of the box break the box and live a full life because when you step out of that box there's another box and you get another box to break. the only thing you do is you make your circle a little bit bigger and a bit bigger mm -hmm break that circle, break that box and just live fully and go fully forward. And that's yeah. the main thing to do is to get live life on the full on, on your own terms. And and people will we yeah, have what people say. People will, well, they will talk behind your back anyway, whether you like it or not. I learned from so many people um, and I can guarantee you I've been backstage with a lot of people with Ty Lopez, with a Grant Cardone, with a Gary V, with a Tony Robbins, with a Les Brown, Robert Kiyosaki, Richard Branson, Jack Canfield, Brian Trey. I've been backstage with all of these people and it's always the same thing. Live life to the fullest. Don't think about what people are going to say because the more people like you, you will have an equivalent of people hating you. But these people might even turn into lovers instead of haters. You, but you can't be bothered by that. You can't put your energy in that. So the only thing you do is you, you make more lovers and go for it and, and spread the word and live life to the fullest. And oh, and one day maybe they will say, hmm, that guy or that girl is not too bad, isn't it? And then they change from haters into lovers. Done. Right? But that happens. That happens, yeah. But being with these people, what I learned is that do what you have to do, pay the price. When you look at a, a uh, George Belfort, you know, The Wolf of Wall Street, and there's one scene in that yeah. movie that says, if you are in financial problems, pick up the phone and dial. If you have problems in your relationship because of money, pick up the phone, start dialing. If you have this and this challenges, pick up the phone, start dialing. 
do something. Don't sit backwards and say, oh my God, it's me, it's always the same. No, action is the only thing that will work. Yeah. Right? I mean, if that makes sense. No, it makes absolute sense. It makes absolute sense. And I think that now, I don't know whether it's, it's you see that more nowadays as well. I don't know, maybe also because of social media and different, we've been spending so much time in front of our computers lately. I think we've been sort of soaking up all these things. Actually, it's interesting how with things like social media, we end up maybe unwittingly comparing ourselves to other people or listening, like getting maybe caught up by certain, certain things and certain energy that maybe doesn't help us. But at the same time, I think it's also gotten people to think more about things like uh, self-development because we're starting to see a lot more of these things. I mean, you know, with, with Tony Robbins, I feel like there's been a, I don't know if it's maybe my impression because I, I, I started um, uh, learning more about this and, and, and seeing more um, about self-development and, and also uh, everything to do with, yeah, bettering yourself. There's, I feel like there's been kind of an explosion in these last few years where there has been a, there has been a drive on the part of a lot of people to say, okay, I want to change my circumstances. And I don't know if it's because, uh, I don't know if with a pandemic now it's even more so because people have found themselves in situations where like I've lost my job or things have dried up. I haven't lost my job, but I have to try and get creative. Yeah. Have you found a an uptick in in people looking for uh, for your help, especially through this period? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. People have been uh, asking me for all kinds of tips and tricks and stuff. And I have been calling people for my own uh, good as well. When I was uh, in Australia and I couldn't go back, come back home to London, um, and I was not allowed to work, uh, you're on a tourist visa, right? Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to work. I was, I was thinking about working a bit and doing this, and I'm, like, I'm not allowed, so what should I, and what I did, I called some fellow speakers and I said, hey, what, what, do you, what will you guys do what, if you would be me? And I said, Renee, your content is so amazing. Uh, why don't you put online courses out there? Well, well online courses, online courses. I mean, <laughs> I was, I, I'm used to speak in front of cameras, but to record a course with one guy, one camera, lots of lights, I was like, whoa. I don't know, but what I did, I did it anyway. So, travel for in July, uh, end of July, I came back, directly to London, we started recording, and did put the course online. The thing is though, that you do have to realize that online courses have been there for a bit now, but they expect a $30 billion business volume per day in 25, which is only four years away in online courses. So if people say, what should I do to, to, to make some money? Or I mean, I lost my job, what can I, I mean, you can come, you can come towards my, go to my online course or become a member in the membership. There's a lot of stuff that will be shared as well. It's, it's been, the membership has been there since Friday. So, um, since last Friday, yeah, I'm working hard. You know, I have to make my bread and butter. <laughs> so what happens is that when people start learning these things, and then they go to an interview, a job interview, and they know what they have been learning in these courses. You go like, yeah, I should, I, when I do this, when I do that. For example, one tip I can give away already is that when you go to an interview and there's a glassed up table, the chances are they know about body language because they will look underneath the table and see what your feet are doing. And why would they know, why would they like to know what your feet are doing? Your feet are the body parts, the further away from your brain, so the less controllable. So your feet will tell so much more than your arms and your hands and whatever. So when you go to an interview and there's a glass up table, they might know about body language. So wouldn't that be crazy or very helpful to know a little bit up front before you go to an interview Absolutely. about body language, right? And these are the things I teach people that, and they come to me, yeah, do you have some tips and tricks for this and this and that? Yeah, of course. But it is, it is so important to know that if you want to make money, I've got people that have online courses about knitting, about fly fishing, about playing check, about whatever the subject is. If you have a subject that is very interesting and you say, hey, I want to share this online, there's so many beautiful platforms. I'm on Kajabi. I don't have any commission by saying this, but I'm going on Kajabi. 
and I'm, it's working like crazy. I'm, I love that platform, and, and there's so many possibilities out there. Um, but again, that's, an, that's a different seminar or webinar. But the fact is, if you want to make money and you have something that you're very good at, even if it's cooking or whatever, mm. film it. Put it on a platform. And little by little by little, you'll make money. Use social media. I had a conversation with uh, Gary Vee in 2018 in London backstage. He says, today, still today, social media is for free. Try to put an ad on television. I guarantee you'll get an invoice from here to Tokyo. Right? I mean, yeah. seriously. Social media is still for free. If you know how to use it, it can be very productive. Put your course out there, make enough noise, and you'll sell bit by bit. If, if only you make $2,000 or euros or pounds or whatever you want to call it, 2000 a month through your online course. Hello? A lot of people don't make that in one month. 2000 And I'm not talking about becoming a millionaire in one week. That doesn't happen. Forget it. Right? But that is something that is super, super, super important to and, and if you say, hey, but I'm not really into online courses and I don't have the right material, I don't have it, what is your advice? Give me a yell. I mean, send me an email or send me a text and, and uh, I'll be glad to help people out, yeah. But don't ask me to give a seminar for free. So I guess the tip, the tip within the tip is also, you know, get online, get creating, put your content out there if you've yeah. got something you're passionate about. Take advantage and monetize it. Incredible. And monetize it. Sorry? And monetize it. And monetize it. Yeah. Take advantage of an incredible yeah. yet still, you know, still free platform and, and monetize it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um and this actually makes me think of a question that did come up. And seeing as we are sort of near well, we're in the last uh, quarter of our hour, I'm gonna start looking at some of the questions. But actually, you, you know, we were talking about online uh, videos and then you know, we're saying you're also available online to, to speak with people. With things like Zoom, uh, you know, our body language, we can also, you said, you know, the table, the, the, the table setting at an interview, now a lot of job interviews are being done over computer. How, how do you uh, adapt to, to that? Like I, I'm assuming that a, a job uh, for, someone who's interviewing for a job uh, now has more control over their surroundings than if they were to walk into uh, an office and sort of say, okay, I'm in the other person's space. How does uh, body language change, or have you noticed a change in body language with, uh, with all this online communication, video communication, and tweaked things? Yeah, the, the very first thing to, to pay attention to is, as you look at me, you see my face, you see a white background. So there's a white background, you see my face mm -hmm. clearly, the light is white, right? What I do have, I can't show you right now, but what I do have is a big white light facing me. Or maybe if I take a picture and show you, let me take a picture of this, like this. All right, here we go. I can show you here now uh, on the camera, right? You see the white light? Oops. Yeah. There's a big white yeah. light. Right? That's the first thing to do, to make sure that the light is okay. And if you don't have a light like that, make sure to face the light from outside and not face the interior of your room and the light coming from the back. Okay. Because people won't see you properly. And especially if you apply for a job, or apply for whatever, make sure the light is okay. The second thing to do is to make sure that the sound is okay, right? And we can all put these things in, we call them the, these ear things that we can put in. However, there's other material on the market, I have it here, right? So what I have as well, but this is more for the recordings that I use, it's a, a clip-on mic, they call it. Mm -hmm. No clip-on mic? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Things like that. And if you go on Amazon and say, people, yeah, that's very expensive. That is not expensive at all. You go to Amazon, you have a look. And if you're not uh, familiar with this stuff, again, send me some info, uh, some, some, uh, send me an email or whatever. I will share you the whole thing. I even got a video on my YouTube channel about how to uh, present yourself in front of a the camera. Then make sure that half of your body is viewable. 
right? So when you use your hands, people can actually see your hands. Okay. So like this, right? Now the next thing is to make sure you have not too much space here. Right? So you fill in the picture and you use your hands, open hands. If you use open hands, you're saying, hey, I'm vulnerable, I'm open, I'm honest, I'm inviting you. Okay. Right? Angela Merkel in Germany, for example, is always like this. Have a look. There's so many pictures of Angela Merkel. If you Google Angela Merkel, you'll see her 99% of the time like this. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to start studying everybody I see on TV now. <laughs> so what does, what does that mean is that somebody who speaks like that to you, right, open, mm. but they always come back to the same position. Listen, I have something very special to tell. Dak, dak. You see, this is somebody that is very well prepared. They know their content. They have a, an answer ready for every single question. They're very confident. Now, people say, can I fake it until I make it? Yeah, I was going to ask that. I wouldn't do that if I would be you. Because yeah. body language is, your body language. will never lie. Mm. Your body is never lying. I mean, I had so many coaching sessions over the last 26 years, so many coaching sessions, so many lectures, so many, when I ask people questions, the way they look already, and they look in the wrong way, I know there might be a lie involved in it. They, and based on not one question, but six, seven, eight questions, I've got six, seven, eight answers. If I have, if 80%, 90% are red wax, I might be dealing with a liar. These are body language, your body will never lie. So can you fake it until you make it? Maybe, but I will not give you that guarantee from my side. I feel like there's there's a there's a point at which you can maybe try at first, but then at a certain point, it's kind of so disjointed with what your instincts want to do that you're going to give yourself away at some point. That's a good one. You say try, right? Yeah, it's an attempt. I ask you to try to try to touch your ear. To me to touch my ear. Yeah. Try to touch your ear. No, I said try. Try. <laughs> <laughs> when you use the word try, you're subconsciously saying, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You leave the door open. If it doesn't work, well, we try. It's a, yeah, there's, uh, I've got my safety net kind of. A, it's an attempt. No, but I, I, I guess what I meant by try is that, yeah, when you say I fake it till I make it, I, I almost feel like in that if you, even if you're saying faking it till you make it, there's always that fake part at the beginning of that phrase that in your mind sort of says yeah. fake. Like, I have to work harder at this, and so something is going to give at some point. Watch out what you put, on, watch out what you put in there and out there, because that will right. frame you as a person all the time. Right. And, and, yeah, when people say, what does my body language tell you? I say, come here, come here. You don't want to know. <laughs> and they laugh. And they say, yeah, but how can I improve my body language? I said, be you. Just be you. And if you know that what you do is not right, change that in the first place. If you know the words you're using are not right, change that in the first place. If you use negative words constantly, start changing that. And that will automatically also change your body language. It makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so when the you, you, you relate with yourself. Yeah. Then, yeah. And, and I say to so many people, wake up. Stop faking it. Wake up. Be you. Be straightforward. Say things as they are. And when people don't like it, well, tough. I lost lots of friends. And then I'm thinking, were they really my friends? You know what I mean? It, it streamlines things. It makes life also a lot simpler and clearer. Because yeah. You know that you're aligned with with what you with what you truly believe. Yeah. So. Um, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Back to you. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, was, um, I, I wanted to uh, sort of. Uh, I wanted to say to Shifan Razik, thank you for your question. I kind of paraphrased that um, about uh, body language in in virtual and Zoom session uh, settings. Um, our next question is from Wasim. 
and says, can you give us an insight about the best body language to use during interviews to show confidence? And the second question is, what is the best way to improve, to improve our body language generally? The last question, the best way to do it is uh, do if you say I'm not interested in a, in a course or following a course or become a member of whatever. If you're not really into that, do research on, on, on the Internet. Do enough research. That's the best way to do it. Um, because I can give you so many tips and tricks right now, but now we'll have to ask you, do you have another couple of hours, right? Um, and if you say, I want proper information, uh, come back to me, I will be able, I will be uh, honored and privileged to, to, to share you my information about the online course and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That being said, but the first question was, I mean, I can't scroll down. What was the first question? Uh, no, the, to give us, uh, could, can you give us an insight about the best body language to use during interviews to show confidence? I guess also if you... Now, the best body language is being prepared and know what you're talking about. Mm. Because that's where it all starts. Do know what you're talking about. Be honest and be prepared. Your body language will follow automatically. Again, body language is an expression of how you feel. And if you if you don't know what you're talking about and you are like a lie, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them a lie, you know, a white lie. You got a white lie, it's gray lies and black lies, and black lies is a lie. A white lies, yeah, you know, doesn't it's not really important if I lie. Of a mission, yeah. Yeah. But when you do that, your body language will show that. Hmm. So what is the best body language uh, to be confident during an interview? is to be well prepared, know what you're talking about. And if you're not confident, go back home and study what you're good at. And if people ask you questions that you can't answer, you might say, sir, ma'am, thank you for that question. I can't answer that question right now. But if you want me to, I'll get back to you with an answer. And that's being honest. And people do appreciate you more being honest than you being a liar. Because a liar will lead to a near no deal. And honesty is a 50-50 chance. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so, but if you know, and if you know that, that you can be you. Your body language will adapt to that because you will be comfortable. Absolutely. It's interesting and how you said that there's a confidence. Sorry, that there's a when you when you are confident in what you're talking about and you're prepared, you're also more likely to not feel like accepting or admitting that you don't know something is a bad you know you won't see it as necessarily a bad thing or something that will be like oh gosh no i don't know this and therefore you know it's, it's terrible you would probably be more open to saying that and recognizing that it's out of no fault of your own it's just human to not know some things yeah and, and if the interview is for example a job interview mm. go there with the attitude of if i'm in amazing if i'm not in amazing I've got nothing to lose. Be you. Just be you. And say things as they are. Right? I mean, yeah. I, I, many, 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 many years ago, when I came back from the armed forces, I applied for a job. I'm not going to name any names, but what happened, I was in a room with two owners of the company and then a manager. And I was there sitting. And they were chatting and chatting and chatting and chatting. And all of a sudden, one of the owners is facing me and he says, Renee, you don't say too much. I said, no, the best speakers are the best listeners. And he said to me, you can go. And I said, what? Yes, you can leave. For that particular job, there were 135 candidates and they chose me. You know why? They said you were the only one with balls in your body. You the only one that I didn't hear the last bit. Language, but they said literally, you were the only person with balls on your body. Okay. You said things as they were. Mm. And why did we choose you? Because why did we let you leave immediately? You did put us checkmate. We couldn't answer this. We couldn't come up with anything that makes sense to continue that conversation. So we said you can go. But I was the only one that says. Da, 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 things as they are and that's what is you don't have to be confident for that you just you just you 
And I said to myself, if I have the job, amazing. If I don't, amazing. Next. Right. Next, next, next. It's a numbers game. Right. And they chose yeah. me. I said, what? I said, when can you start? I said, last Monday. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> So yeah, but, but you, know, you 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 did touch upon a, a something which is also that that desire to uh, because you know it's a numbers game and when you go out for a job as well you also think oh my gosh you know I'm up against all these people I have to have something more than them or you don't know you obviously are not a mind reader you don't know these other people you don't know what you could possibly you know pull out of your hat. Um, but you know that you want the job. You can easily get caught up in this wanting to also either try to sense and work out what they might want to hear. Um, but you're saying that that is that's going to show through in your body language too. Yeah, absolutely. And and le letting things go is the best scenario. I I mean, in in 1995 when I bought that very first book of Tony Robbins. I would. I never could imagine myself ending up collaborating with him, but there was something that I put out there, and the only thing I did, I did put it out there. I prayed about it, meditated about it. I said, you know what? Let it go. If it happens, amazing. If it doesn't, amazing. It's because you're not ready for it. When my dad died in 2002, which is now 18 19 years ago, I already read a couple of books about the Dalai Lama and Deepak Chopra and Wayne Dyer and all these books about spiritualism and stuff. I'm not a Buddhist, but I love the way they think. And what happens is that my dad dies, and I, I, the last reading that you can have when, when before they fin the, close the coffin, or how you call that, I, I said, you know what, I'll, first of all, I see you on the other side, don't worry about me. And secondly, I'm going to go for my dreams. And if there's one thing I really want to uh, achieve is to meet up with the Dalai Lama. And I'm, I prayed and I meditated, and it was 2002, and I said, you know what, forget it. I'm going to stop meditating and praying about it. If it happens, it's amazing. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's because I'm not ready for this. Four years later, I met him. Through Father's Day, I got an envelope for my daughter, for one of my daughters, two tickets to go and see the Dalai Lama. And by the way, in Belgium. Wow. The details about what you put out there, be very careful. Because if a farmer just put one potato in the ground, there's no tomatoes coming out. There will be multiple potatoes coming out. So what you put in, what you put out there, will come back to you multiply. That's incredible. That's that's the yeah. incredible. Yeah, things that are happening, but you have to be convinced and also do the job, do the work. Right. Sitting, leaning it's backwards. Not, it's not magic, but you've got to. Yeah, you've got to. You, you, you've got to, got to help the magic happen in a way. <laughs> you've really got to help it. By paying the price, for example, I drove eight hours sometimes for five minutes meeting. So I drove from Belgium through France, through London, eight hours on the road, including in, in, including the, the ferry, right? Eight hours for five minutes meeting. And then eight hours back, 16 hours. So many people say that you're you're nuts. I said that. That's correct. Don't worry about it. I'm yeah. paying the price for my dream. That's it. And if you don't want to do that, that's okay. Everything is okay in life. It is, what it is what you choose it to be. Absolutely, yeah. exactly. So, Renee, we actually had one more question I did want to ask. I realized we were a couple of minutes over. We did maybe start a couple of minutes late. So I just wanted to, this one last question because um, Alindia Conescu, I hope I said her uh, the name correctly, is how can I avoid showing that I am stressed during an exam, uh, even if I'm very well prepared? I, I wanted to touch on this question just because I don't know if this person has to give an exam soon. So. Yeah. Uh, the first thing to ask yourself, why are you stressed? How can I avoid showing that I'm stressed? Why are you stressed? Right. The, the main thing to do in, 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 in and especially for exams or presentations or if you're a public speaker or if you're a teacher, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, but if you have to go public or you have an exam or a, whatever it is, make sure to eat sane. What I mean about that, I've got my daily rituals with spirulina and wheatgrass and all that stuff, uh, curcuma, uh, turmeric in England, in, in English, turmeric, right? The turmeric thing and then all of these things and... Here, water, drink water, um, as much as you can, water, water, water. 
when you are going to do an exam or, or whatever it is in an interview, don't drink too much coffee and especially not alcohol. Alcohol might calm you down, but it's not going to help you during the exam or during the interview. Right? So many people say they go to a, a business meeting and they have to uh, close a deal for a couple of millions. But at midday, they have a meal, a lunch with some wine or some alcohol. I mean, this is the worst recipe to go into a business meeting and do things that really make sense. Right? And you might say, yeah, but I'm used to this. I've been doing this for years. Keep doing what you're doing. But it's going to give you the same results. Yeah. And to answer the question of Alin, is that please, if you are stressed, ask yourself, why are you stressed? Drink enough Healthy water. Make sure. Yeah, drink enough water, make sure you eat sane, and make sure before you go into that exam to do some meditation as well. Mm -hmm. Meditation, some relaxation, and then go. Right? I've got ex uh, examples of if you put your, I'm going to give you one more, and then we have to close it down. Thank you. Uh, I think mm -hmm. if you put your hands like this together, your fists, two bolts of your fists together, and you push them as hard as possible, and hard as possible, as hard as possible, and harder, and even harder until it hurts. And then you release the stress along your body and you shake your hands like this, like this. Ah, what happens? It goes like <laughs> along your spine. These are endorphins that are released. Endorphins are the happy hormones. Happy if, you, if you want to know more about endorphins, Google endorphins. Endorphins are the happy hormones. That means like if you do that exercise, you go like, oh, mm, good feeling. That might reduce the stress, reduce right. the cortisol and pull the testosterone. But that is again different. This is hormones and yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's all. I mean, it's all. These are all things that 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 connect. So it's it's all about. It this all brings in you know body language. All of this comes uh, is part of this. So uh, Renee, thank you so much for your time. This has been you know an incredible hour. I'm hoping that there will be a chance to. Uh, to continue maybe in the future with uh, with uh, some more discussions and, and maybe more sort of in-depth looks at uh, different aspects of body language. Um, but for now, that is all the time that we have. Thank you so much again. If there are any questions that have gone unanswered or any questions that might come up in the future, uh, please send them to the email that has uh, should have popped up in the chat and uh, we will make sure that they do get answered. Mm -hmm. What I would add is people can follow me because there's a question, how can we follow you, Renee, on social media? Okay. I'm on 24 different platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, name it, I probably oh, okay. And if you still don't find me, it's because you have a problem with your Wi-Fi, I always say. So, <laughs> but all of the information that we've been talking about is also in the online course. So if people are interested, just send me a message or connect through social media. Um, on what would be the best way to connect is through LinkedIn. I'm very much on LinkedIn. Um, all my business is done through LinkedIn. I mean, most of my business, not all my business. So, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, one way or another, your questions will be answered. <laughs> and I look forward, I mean, I look forward to do more with Oxford Business College. I've been on Oxford Business College for two years, uh, in 18 and 19. Uh, it was an amazing time being at Oxford uh, Business College. And in the meantime, we had some experience in Brooks University as well in Oxford. It was an amazing experience. I mean, and to be back here with you guys is, I couldn't oh, so happy to hear that. Well, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this will be uh, the, the first of, of many. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. Thank you so much again. And to everyone, thank you for, for following us and for watching. And um, we shall be seeing you again soon. And have a lovely evening. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.